So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we could create our own polyphonic or paraphonic type patches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to load our new instrument or our default patch just to show you how you'd go about setting up your own polyphonic or paraphonic sound. Now the difference between a paraphonic and a true polyphonic synthesizer is a polyphonic synthesizer is going to have an oscillator, filter, and VCA per each voice at the minimum, where a paraphonic synthesizer is going to have multiple oscillators, in our case four, and then it's going to share the filter and final VCA. Now we do have VCAs and envelopes dedicated to every one of our oscillators here, so the first thing we want to do is go to our mixer, make sure the lock is off, and we're going to set our mix joystick right in the middle and turn our lock on. That's going to provide a nice even balance between every oscillator. The other thing we need to do here is select oscillator 1, 2, 3, and 4 to be controlled by an envelope. What that does is it sends the oscillator through a VCA, and that VCA is controlled by each oscillator's envelope. Next, we're going to go to our oscillators, and I'm just going to turn each oscillator down by one octave and go back to oscillator 1. And you see this little parameter here called poly. Technically, it's paraphonic, but if we just said para, it'd be hard to distinguish what that is. So this is your poly mode. If it's off, that means the keyboard's going to be operating in your typical monophonic mode, playing all four oscillators at the same time. So we press this encoder here to select our first polyphonic mode. There's a total of, I believe, eight. And you'll notice here they're grouped. There's four that start with a one, and then four more that start with a four. Uh, the one designates that our voices are all going to be controlled by envelope one. So we go here and we start playing notes and we hear nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's because our envelope is set with a zero tack, zero decay, zero sustain. So let's go ahead and turn our sustain up and we're going to increase the release time just so we prevent any clicks when we release a note. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select our one pole filter, turn our cutoff up so we can hear all the harmonics there. All right, so right here we're in a poly mode where envelope one is controlling all the envelope times for envelopes one, two, three, and four. That makes our settings much quicker. And the SQ stands for sequential. What that means is as we start to play a new group of notes, the first note we play will always play oscillator one followed by two, three, and four. Now the other thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go to my filter, set the envelope to control the cutoff frequency 100%, go to my filters envelope, and I'm going to dial up a decay time, and I'm going to set the sustain to 50%. And now we can show you the difference between some of these poly modes here. So sequential one, the filters envelope is only being triggered on our first note. Now if we go to the next selection, 1ST, we now have envelope one controlling all the envelope times. We're in a sequential mode, meaning oscillator one plays first, then two, three, and four but now it's triggering or re-triggering the filter envelope. So now as we play additional notes, we're going to hear that filter envelope fire off every time we play a new note of the chord. Now we could also turn up the glide time, and what's going to happen is it's going to try to glide each voice from the previous pitch that it played to the current pitch. So. In comparison, when we're in monophonic mode, the vector requires more than one note to play to trigger its autoglide function. Otherwise, it plays every note at its initial pitch and then will glide to the next note. But when we are in this mode, where it's always trying to play oscillator one first, we play that note. It's gliding from the last pitch we played because of this polyphonic glide type. Um, now every oscillator does have its own glide time. Currently these oscillators 2, 3, and 4 are set to follow what oscillator 1's doing. You 
you get the idea there. Now let's go take a look at the next poly mode. Again, we've got the one, meaning envelope one is controlling all the envelope times. And just to show you that, if we were to go to envelope two, three, or four, we're prompted with this message, poly one mode is active. This envelope uses envelope one settings. And that's just to remind you that you're doing all your adjustments for these envelope times right here at envelope one. So poly one RR is now a round robin mode, which is common in a lot of poly synths. And what that means is every time we press a note, even if we're playing a single note, it's going to choose the next available oscillator. So it'll play one, then two, then three, and then four. What we should do to kind of show this is let's set up a quick assignment. Let's go to our waveforms and let's assign wave to there. Let's go to our next oscillator, assign this waveform to there. Go to our next oscillator, assign that waveform to here. And go to our fourth oscillator, assign that to here. Now when we go to assign mode, we can quickly dial up different, like let's say we want square wave for all these. Or maybe we want some of the digital waveforms. Just remember what number you're on, 10, 10, 10, and 10. Now what I wanted to show you is we can select different waveforms here just at random and every time I hit a note here since we are in round robin we're actually selecting a different waveform. We can see it. If we'd like to compensate for this gain here now, obviously, when we're playing all four notes, we're overdriving this mixer gain stage, so we need to turn that down so the waveforms are not clipping. There, we can see that. That's one thing you could do. And now let's, instead, let's dial up a different semitone pitch for every one of these oscillators. So, two is going to play D. 3 will play E, 4 will play F. Now that's going to get weird when we start playing it polyphonically because instead of all of them tuned to the root pitch of C, they're all offset by some weird amount. So we probably want to clear those out to do more normal stuff. Um, the other thing I'll show you is let's go back to the sequential mode and let's start playing with some frequency modulation. Let's say voice one, we just want to play normal. And in fact, I'm going to go back here and just select sawtooth for all these. Okay. And we're going to go to oscillator 2 and start introducing some modulation here. So let's go turn up our LFO 2 modulation amount. We're going to turn LFO to key track. I'm going to tune that. Now let's go to frequency modulation 3. I'm going to set LFO 3 to modulate oscillator 3. Again, I'm going to turn on key tracking and now play three notes. That. Maybe I want to slow it. Now, what's going to happen is I, I play this first note. It plays normally, but as I add the second note, we're going to hear that FM'd voice playing. Maybe that's too much. Play our third voice. That's pretty wild. I'm gonna 
And in that way, we can create or recreate some of the effects that you may hear in a vintage synth where all the modulations are slightly different or every voice sounds slightly different. And that's what's going to give us a nice fat chord. versus everything being perfectly aligned and in tune. The other thing we could do is slightly detune some of these oscillators so that as we play a chord, some of them are more in tune and some are less in tune. Another trick you could do, if you think back to these oscillators, you know, where you are working with some of the digital waveforms and now you can use, let's say, the LFO because we're not using those for each voice. We could be using the LFO to slowly fade from one waveform to the other digital waveform and do that for each individual voice. And we could create all sorts of effects uh, from AM to FM to just slow tonal changes to actually recreating kind of a digital filtering. And in that way, we are able to create your typical polyphonic sound set. And then you've got this additional analog filter that can be used to modulate everything globally. Let's go back here and turn off our modulations. Uh, let's go here and let's turn down the envelope a bit because you'll see we're going to hit the headroom here. If we add both envelope and LFO at the full amount. So let's turn this up and go to our filter LFO. Now let's go back here to the filter and let's apply a control to that filter's LFO amount. Let's use touch. So now as we play a polyphonic chord, we can increase our touch to bring in that filter modulation. Now the thing I'll show you here is if we were playing a single key, due to the nature of this capacitive touch keyboard, we have a full range with our finger here. But as we apply more fingers to the capacitive touch keyboard, it's like you are a capacitive value of one. And so if you play one finger, you get that much modulation amount. If you play two notes, each finger has half the modulation amount. If you play three, you're kind of at a third, and four, you're going to be at about a fourth. Now you can compensate for that by, like I said earlier, either touching the front panel or the metal chassis, which is going to increase your capacitance and give you more of that full range of touch. You get the idea. The other thing we can do is go to this glide, set up glides. And there we're actually able to hold a chord and glide it to a different chord. And that's something you just can't do on most other synthesizers. So these other polyphonic or paraphonic modes that start with the four, they give you even more control over your polyphonic patch by allowing you to set up individual times for each one of these envelopes. So instead of just using envelope one's time, now you've got two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and try that. And you notice that we are only hearing that first note play. And we don't hear voices two, three, or four. And you're wondering why? Well, let's go take a look at envelopes two, three, and four. And we see the sustain levels turned down. So let's turn that up. Let's give it a little bit of release time, too. And now let's give it a try. Now we could actually go in here and set these envelope times to different times if we want. Let's go to oscillator one, turn our sustain down, and let's provide, oh, let's say a decay time. Let's go to our second envelope and provide a little bit of attack time. So you hear how that second note. Let's 
turn off our glide so that we don't hear that. Now we could add some more attack time to some of these other envelopes. So they kind of fade in once we play them. Just gives you a total control over each voice and if you wanted to you could dial up every single oscillator to be a different tone, pitch, uh, harmonic content with its waveforms, different envelopes and in that way you could try some new playing techniques where let's say the first voice is a bass sound the second voice is more of a lead sound so you could be playing a monophonic little bass sound hold one note and then start playing your lead sound Hold that note and then begin playing the third sound on top of that. Um, another thing you might try is with oscillators 2, 3, and 4, you may want to sync those up to oscillator 1, which will provide some interesting different harmonic sync tones depending on what chords you're playing. Um, a lot of different things you can try uh, that you can't do with a normal synth, so I would recommend you do. All right, that pretty much sums up these polyphonic modes. Uh, one other thing I should point out is anytime you go to the sequencer and you were in a polyphonic mode like this and you start playback of the sequence, check it out. It's going to turn poly mode off and that's because our ARP and sequencer that's built into the Vectra is designed specifically for monophonic sequencing. So basically, the sequencer's smart. If you're in a poly mode and you try playing the sequencer, it kicks you out back into the monophonic mode so you can sequence that voice or all the voices and uh, not have any problems.